Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Evangelical Norm, and I am Norm. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about evangelism, uh, something that is I consider my calling. Uh, I feel like I'm called to evangelize. It's something that I love to do. Um, I think it's important. I think it's, it's one of the most important things we can do as a Christian is share the gospel with other people. Um, evangelism looks different and for different people in different ways, but it should always be, I mean, evangelism is the sharing of the gospel, the good news, sharing the good news with those people who need to hear it. Um, and it should be one of the first things we do as Christians. Um, and what sparked this, this episode and, uh, what really put this on, uh, made this something that I really wanted to, to talk about was a couple weeks ago. I posted a meme on my Twitter feed that said this. It said, if the lesson you get from Jesus hanging with sinners is you should hang more with sinners, you're confused on who you are in the story. And we get confused a lot with stories in the Bible, and we get confused on who we are in the story. Um, rarely are we David. Rarely are we Daniel. Usually those, those people in those stories, um, when we take those, I mean, those are historical accounts of things that actually happened. The Bible is not a book full of, of fairy tales that we pull morals from. It's it's a historical book. These people lived and they, they did what the, the Bible says they did. Um, but we pull principles from those. Um, we can pull principles from those stories. But in the story of David and Goliath, we are not David. We are not slaying our giant. We are the, the, the shaking in their boots Israelites. Jesus is David. And Goliath is our sin that uh, Jesus defeated on our behalf. And so the same thing in this situation, and even more so, is we are not Jesus in this situation. We are the sinners that he chose to hang out with, to share the good news with, so that we could be saved. And the, the problem is, is, so often we hear, you know, we look at these things that like friendship evangelism, which I do not agree with, and we hear these these statements like they don't they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, and I, and I firmly believe that's a lie from the pit of hell. That is nothing more than an excuse for people to not share the gospel, to not say something that might possibly be offensive to their new friends who are probably more in line to influence, poorly influence the Christian who decided they should hang out with these, these sinners, rather than if the Christian is not sharing the gospel, you are not influencing them. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says it, don't be deceived, bad company corrupts good morals. We need to be sharing the gospel. You know, um, one example I think of in, in this situation, uh, you know, to show that we don't live like this, we don't, we don't live this uh, philosophy of they don't, we don't care how much you know until we know how much you care. When you go to the doctor because you've got, you know, some issue going on and when you go in and they examine you and they do their tests and they come back and say you have cancer, you don't discount the diagnosis because you've never had a chance to sit and have a few beers with the doctor. You know, you, I don't know how much you care about me, so I, I'm going to discount your diagnosis. No. The fact that he's giving you the diagnosis shows that there in some way he cares. You know, if the doctor didn't care about you, he wouldn't tell you about your cancer. He wouldn't offer options of treatment and things like this. He would just let you go on. If he didn't care, he'd let you go on living with this this debilitating terminal disease the same thing with christians you know, i i think of a, a video that Penn Gillette, famous atheist magician did and he was talking about someone who had given him a bible and, and shared their faith and he said if you truly believe that someone is going to hell because of their sin how much do you have to hate that person to not share the gospel you know to show how much you care, you have to give them truth immediately. It should be one of the first things that we do is to share the gospel with people that we meet. And when you do evangelism like I do or Ray Comfort or people who go out on the street, you know, you see Jeff Durbin who, who talks to, 
to Mormons at temples and goes out to the, the Planned Parenthood clinics and things like this, you know, chances are we're never going to see half of those people again. You know, when I go down to Salt Lake City, which I've, I've only done a couple of times when at general conference, and I talk to people and have conversations with people, chances are I'm never going to meet them again. But it's still important that I give them the gospel immediately. But there are times where, you know, co-workers or other people that you meet, your neighbors and so on, that you need to, the gospel should be one of the first things you share and then build a genuine relationship with these people, to have a genuine friendship. But if we're building friendships just to earn the right to share Jesus, that's deceptive. That is, that's, it's bait and switch, you know, and, and most of the time it'll never happen because the closer you get, who are the hardest people you have, you find to share the gospel with? Your friends and your family. Because you're invested and you don't want to offend them. You don't want to say something that might make them not want to talk to you. And so the, the closer we get in those relationships, the less likely you are to actually share the gospel. And then you end up with things like, and I love Ray Comfort and, and Kirk Cameron, but I'm pretty sure it was on one of their episodes of Way of the Master that one of them said, maybe it's not your job to share the gospel with your family might be someone else's job and I could be wrong and if I'm wrong correct me on that but I'm pretty sure I remember those words coming from Kirk Frank or Kirk Franklin Kirk Cameron a whole different conversation about Kirk Franklin we'll have that another day but so here and if, if we if we put the gospel out there first then all possibility of offense has happened at the beginning. They know exactly where you're coming from, and now you can build a genuine relationship. I, I work with, with Mormons who have heard me tell, we've had the conversation, and I've said, look, I believe your religion is wrong, and you believe mine is wrong. It's the whole basis of the Mormon church is that Joseph Smith spoke with Jesus, and Jesus said to him that, all other religions were wrong, that their creeds were an abomination and the professors of which are corrupt. So that's the whole basis of Mormonism is that every other religion is wrong and they're the only true religion. And I'm a big boy, I can handle that. I can handle if a Mormon is honest with me and just says, I believe your religion is an abomination because that's what Jesus supposedly said to Joseph Smith. If you're going to be deceptive with me, well, I don't have respect for you. If you're going to tell me, oh, no, no, we're all okay, we're all just Christians, no. I grew up Mormon. I know what the teachings are. I know that you as an LDS person believe that my religion is an abomination. And I'm a big boy. I can handle that. And I'm going to let you know that I believe your religion is an abomination. That's what I believe. I, I don't hate Mormons. Don't hear me say that. I love Mormons. The people who practice the Mormon religion, I love each and every one of them. I despise the doctrines and the teachings of the church. And I'll say that outright at the beginning and let all the offense be out there at the beginning to start with. And, and every person that I work with has heard this, I think, for the most part, pretty much. Maybe one or two people I haven't had this conversation with, but it's very rare. You know, but it's out there. And we're friends. I'm friends with every person that I work with. Every Mormon that I, I come in contact with, I'm, I've been, well, not everyone, but I'm, I'm friends with the majority of them, the ones that I've worked with, and they know my beliefs, and I, I let them know, and so I've got every possibility of offense out in the beginning, they know where I'm coming from, now we can build a genuine relationship, and that's the important thing, is that when we share the gospel with these people that we will continually interact with, that we build real relationships, that our relationships aren't built just on the basis of we want to get you saved. I always want to get you saved, but I want to be in a, have a, a friendship and a relationship with that person. I want to talk about football. I want to hang out and drink a beer if they drink beer or, or coffee or whatever it is that they drink. If they're Mormon and they don't, we'll have, we'll have soda and ice cream, whatever, green jello. But I want to have a relationship. And that's the important thing about this is that that's the example of Jesus we should be carrying on. Not that we just go hang out with sinners, but that we 
share the gospel and build real relationships with them and and be genuine be genuine always let them know that that your first and foremost purpose is to glorify God and that's going to come out in everything you do and again we need to be in that place where we are influencing them more than they are influencing us because so many times in those situations where Christians are just hanging out with sinners and not wanting to really share the gospel or whatever, they're going to be poorly influenced by those sinners. And, and you know, again, leading to backsliding, leading to, to falling into sin in one way or another. You know, I think about Triple X Church, and I haven't followed these guys for a while. I, 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 I used to think they were great, and, you know, they, but then they started doing putting booths at, at adult entertainment conferences. And, you know, we have Comic-Con here in Salt Lake and, and stuff like that, where they have their adult con, whatever it would be. You know, and Triple X Church is setting up a booth inside this adult entertainment conference. And I'm like, this is not good. This is not safe. This is not, this is, again, it's a, a even an example that is nowhere near what Jesus did. You know, when Jesus and when the money changers were in the temple, Jesus didn't set up a booth among the money changers with the hope that they would come talk to him and he'd be able to pray for them and share the gospel and, and teach them the truth. He drove them out. This was grievous sin that, that, that was, was horrible and he drove them out. And we should, we should truly be willing to do that. I've said this before, and this is controversial, and people get mad at me, but I've told youth, because that's usually where the the teaching that don't, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care lie comes into things, is in Christian youth, and they're teaching them, go have have non-Christian friends is, and, and use that, and invite them to youth group, and come, and, and just be, and don't say anything offensive, but do whatever you can to be friends, and I'm like, no, go share the gospel and risk that friendship. Lay out to them that, that they are they they're depraved, that they're sinners, and if they don't repent and put their trust in Jesus, then their ultimate end is going to be hell. And let them know that and let them know but but their sin has earned them the wrath of God, but Jesus took that wrath upon himself on the cross. And if we believe and repent and put our trust in him, we will be saved. Give them that truth and let that be a risk of your friendship. I will risk every friendship I have for the sake of the gospel. And I will not risk my, my, my glorifying God and my testimony and my witness. I will not risk it just for the simple fact to, or the simple, um, I can't think of a word that I'm trying to think of. Not just simply to have non-Christian friends. I'm not going to risk my witness by just having Christian friends that I don't want to offend that could possibly influence me to sin. I'm going to share the gospel. I'm going to make it known and, and put that out there because then I have accountability. If these people know that, that I am a Christian and that I believe what I believe, then now I have accountability. I can't hide behind not saying anything and, and, and risk sin. I have the accountability. I put it out there. They know where I'm coming from. And that is the most important thing we can do as an evangelist, as a Christian. When we share, when we meet people, we should share the gospel with them immediately. Let them know where we're coming from. And then we have to have Christian friends who can help build up and strengthen our testimony and then use that to go and to, to give truth to our non-Christian friends. But ultimately, it comes back to the fact that the first and foremost thing we have to do is make the gospel known. We have to, we have to share the gospel so that our non-Christian friends might become Christian friends, that God will use us as he's drawing these people to himself. And some of those people are going to walk away and they're never going to want to have a relationship with us. They're never going to want to be friends. And we need to be willing to risk that. So what I would say is be willing to risk your non-Christian friends for the sake of the gospel by sharing the gospel first and foremost. And let those who want nothing to do with you, let them walk away. And then we can kick the dust off our feet. But then those who are like, okay, I see where you're coming from. 
I may not believe that right now. I may not be, you know, in line with you, but hey, you know, at least you're open and you're honest and you're genuine with me. Let's go hang out and watch a football game or do whatever it is that we do. But that that Christian, that gospel has got to come out first. It's got to be first and foremost. Otherwise, we're being deceptive. We're baiting and switching. We're trying to, to get in where we shouldn't be, and we run the risk. It's dangerous. We run the ri we, huge risk in, in just having non-Christian friends for the sake of having non-Christian friends. The gospel should be first. We should be sharing the gospel and then building relationships with those who have heard it. And, and letting the gospel be an offense to those who don't want to hear it and let them go. And that's, you know, that's, that's where I'm coming from when I, when I post stuff like this. I think this, we're, I'm not Jesus in that situation. I am not Jesus just sent to go out and, and hang out with Christians. Because again, like I said, Jesus didn't run the risk of, of falling into sin. I do. So if I'm not able to get that gospel out there immediately and say, this is what I stand on, this is my belief, then there's so much temptation to not ever share it and not ever let them know, and then you can fall into sin. So, yes, we should have non-Christian friends, but it should be on a basis of we let them know who we are first, and then go from there to where the point where they cannot influence us in a negative way, but we are able to influence them for the gospel. So, take that for what it's worth. I'm, I'm probably going to talk a little more about evangelism over the the next couple of episodes just because again like I said it's something that I really desire to talk about and I love to talk about um, and so we'll, we'll get more into talking about things like friendship evangel evangelism and why I don't think it works um, and the way that I like to evangelize and some other things and uh, over the next, over the summer I'm gonna do a lot of that out on the street farmers markets and stuff like that and so potentially we'll we'll do some videos of those I'm not not sure if I'm gonna do live videos of, of uh, evangelism yet but we'll see so thanks for listening uh, I hope this is helpful I hope this is edifying and encouraging um, and maybe offensive and uh, because the gospel is offensive and and I hope I wasn't offensive just to be offensive, but I hope that it, it that the truth of the gospel may have offended you in a sense to make you stop and think about what it means and and the sin that, that you carry that, that drove Christ to the cross cross uh, to to provide uh, a way out of uh, the wrath that he took the wrath on your behalf. So Again, I hope it was edifying. I hope I hope you got something out of this. Um, until next time, always preach the gospel. Use words; they're necessary. Necessary. <laughs> Soli Deo Gloria.